Hey, welcome to Comic Book News and the Comic Book Shelf, where we review new comics. Today, we're going to look at a uh, modern master who's been working since the 80s, who put out a new number one issue just last week. Are we talking about Frank Miller? No, we're talking about Stan Sakai and Usagi Ojimbo. Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Usagi Yojimbo number one. This is a brand new uh, relaunch of the long-running independent comics, independent comic Usagi Yojimbo. Um, Usagi's first appearance was way back, way, way back in 1984 in Albedo number two. Now this is basically a book about furries or a kind of a furry based book rather meaning it was all anthropomorphic animals in various types of comics, adventures, etc. Uh, lots of different stories in here, but only one that really stuck. You know, you might remember Usagi um, more from maybe Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's where a lot of people first encountered him. In fact, many people think that he is like a spin-off or an offshoot of the Turtles, and uh, that's not true at all. Uh, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird of the Turtles were cool enough to help bring in other independent creators whose vision sort of fit with the turtles and help them like get some of that cartoon money and TV money and uh, uh, Usagi was one of the beneficiaries of that so hey let's uh, go to the uh, million dollar high-tech comic book cam and take a look inside Usagi Ujimbo number one you know I considered using a digital uh, version IDW uh, the new publisher by the way uh, Formerly uh, from Dark Horse, uh, this has been picked up by I IDW and really given um, a brand new full color treatment with colors by Tom Luth. Tom Luth and Stan, uh, Stan Sakai have worked together for decades, um, both on the covers of Usagi and also on Gru, Gru the Wanderer. Uh, Sergio Argonis and Mark Evanier are two parts of the four part Gru team, which included Stan Sakai on letters and Tom Luth on colors. Well, uh, these two also work together on Usagi, and now uh, Tom is coloring the full book. There's a little bit of glare because this paper is so glossy and nice, but um, it's really a pleasure to see uh, the artwork presented this way with with beautiful color. I mean, it works great. It, it, seeing as it's a Japanese kind of manga influence, I brought along my uh, Usagi Yojimbo Saga Volume 1. This is a... I mean, there's over 20... 30 volumes of Usagi, I think, at this point. This is how it's been traditionally presented. And don't get me wrong. This is beautiful. This is a great way to read comics. Sakai is a master of black and white cartooning. So it's eminently readable and fun. Uh, for, 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 you know, kid, any kid from, let's say, 10 or 12 up is going to love this. There's lots of sword fights and killing in Usagi Yojimbo, right? Tons of it. Um... But uh, it's not gory or graphic, and it's and it's presented in a historical way. That's one of the really cool things about Usagi, is you know, along the way you get to learn facts about uh, like historical feudal Japan, about the samurai system, uh, and the feudal system with the shoguns and etc. But then also about um, their art and culture, and this one in particular deals with I, I believe it's pronounced Bunraku. Um, which is sort of Japanese uh, puppetry. And uh, these are like giant puppets that are run by two or three people. And you learn a lot about the history, including the fact that like the puppeteers have to go through decades of training. They start by like being a puppet on the foot and work their way up to the right hand and then the left hand and the face. And it's almost reminds you of like, uh, like um, sort of like uh, Jim Henson's Muppet workshop, like in the 14th century, 15th century, whatever this is. Um, anyway, it's hard to go wrong with Usagi. Now, am I going to say this is a incredible departure? Well, I mean, the color is a humongous change, right? That's different going forward. I'm assuming that the, the book will be in color um, and that perhaps they'll even go back since IDW is so famous for doing these reprints and historical kind of uh, recreations, not recreations, collections. Maybe they'll go back and colorize the, the early volumes of Usagi and bring them out in a full color format. Now, I mean, Usagi is popular all over the world. 
it's not just a phenomenon where it's like some comic from the 80s, a niche thing, and it's been around. This is, uh, Sakai is acknowledged as a master comic storyteller. I mean, he's up in the pantheon of all ages comics with guys like uh, Jeff Smith from Bone, and I'm going to even venture to say Carl Barks uh, of, of, of the Disney Duck comics. The guy is a true master of the art form of comics. So um, if you're not reading it, if you've never read it, Number one is a great chance to jump in. Jump in here. Now, there's there's history to it. Like, just here in this page, it's like um, referring to characters and events that happened. And, you know, see Usagi Book 26, Traders of the Earth. And we're not talking to issue 26. We're talking, like, collected volume of multiple six or seven issues. So there's a lot. But what's great about them is you can read any of them in kind of any order. It doesn't really matter. There is a continuity, but sometimes they tell stories in flashback anyway. So, you know, jump in where you can. In fact, the Dark Horse volumes, if you buy these big phone book sized ones that Dark Horse put out, they really didn't even go chronological order. They sort of started uh, at a place where they thought um, more people uh, would be willing to jump on the series. And that's an issue that crossed over with the Turtles. So you see a Turtles crossover, but this didn't happen until many, many years um, into o both Osagi and the Turtles. So these are printed, they're reprinted out of order anyway. Um, so don't worry about the order. If you're a completist, you got many, 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 many hundreds uh, of issues that you can go back and collect or collect the trade paperbacks or just check them out at the library and read them, right? Because um, comics is about more than just like collecting. Comics is about reading and enjoying stories that uh, y you can enjoy for the rest of your life. So this is one of them. Go to your comic shop, and if they don't carry Usagi, ask them why the heck not, and uh, make sure to ask for it by name, and start buying and reading more comics. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you might like some of these other videos. So. Check them out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the bell if you want notifications of new videos.